Niche.com, how dare you? How dare you? You guys, Niche.com just ranked the best neighborhoods in Arlington, Virginia for 2024. And I am going to go through their top 10 and give you my opinion because we all know that that's what I seem to do. I wouldn't call it best, but that's just what I seem to do all the time. Uh, and so we're going to talk about what they have on their list and then we're going to learn whether or not you can trust Niche.com because we are going to assess how they do. I promise you that you are going to love some of these that they have on their list, especially number seven. I know, it's like a spoiler alert, and I already told you the spoiler. All right, so I am Melissa Terzis, DC Real Estate Mama. I do these videos for you every week. I break down living in DC, Maryland, Northern Virginia. I've been here over 20 years, so I know these areas really well. I do everything myself. I research, I film, I tell you my opinion, uh, all that good stuff. So make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss the new videos. So let's get to this list uh, from niche.com. Anyway, number 10, North Roslyn. Here is the first of our niche.com manufactured neighborhoods. Roslyn is already a very small neighborhood, uh, but the fact that they've pulled out North Roslyn on its own, this is, I, I don't know. All right, so here's what they're saying. Allegedly, this neighborhood is north of Wilson Boulevard, stretches up to I-66 with North Quinn Street being the western border and, of course, the Potomac River on the east because that's as far as you can go. This is a bustling area for being so small, though. So what is pretty interesting here, though, is that you've got packed into this little tiny strip hotels, restaurants, you have corporations like Nestle and Deloitte, you have a Safeway grocery store, you've got HB Woodlawn High School, Target is here, there's apartments here, there's condos, there's a few townhomes in this neighborhood. So the condos are mostly high rise and high end buildings. So you've got places like the Atrium, Turnberry Tower, the aptly named Waterview building. These buildings all have amazing views thanks to Rosalind having the highest buildings in the immediate area. Now you're gonna pay over a million for the view, but you can most definitely get a condo here starting at 400,000. It's gonna be a small one bedroom, but it can be done if you wanna live in this neighborhood. Something to know here, the condo fees, uh, they're in these high rises, they're very, 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 very steep, right? Um, just to be wary of what you're buying into, this is luxury. These are top amenities you've got here. Awesome service oriented staff that's on site. Now, if you go over to the roads that are Colonial Terrace and Colonial Court, it's going to actually believe hard, be hard to believe that you are just two blocks away from that ultra city, sophisticated feel of Roslyn. Uh, the Metro also being here is going to make Roslyn and this North Roslyn area a very cool and convenient place to live. Now, why would Niche.com split up what is already a small neighborhood Roslyn into North Roslyn? nobody knows um, and locally you're actually never going to hear anybody say mm, I want to move to North Roslyn that doesn't happen okay so just so that you know niche.com next time you do your list that's not a thing North Roslyn's not a thing now you have Melissa on the scene right now I am standing in the middle of what niche.com calls North Roslyn do you know what I'm standing in though Roslyn you know why because nobody calls it North Roslyn Roslyn's so small as it is that there's no way to, we would ever break it up into north, south, proper. I don't even know what they're talking about. This building behind me is Turnberry Tower. This gorgeous, gorgeous building is one of the highest luxury buildings in the whole DC area. And guess where everybody says it is? Roslyn, because that's where it is. Number nine, North Highland. Another niche.com manufactured neighborhood is North Highland. North Highland has actual boundaries according to both niche and Google. And by the way, I do call it niche. I don't say niche. I don't know. I just don't like niche. It's just not my thing. I like niche. Um, maybe because it rhymes with never mind. Uh, so according to Google, it actually does have some boundaries here. So it's between 66 and south of the GW Parkway. Funny enough, it's north of North Roslyn and like North Roslyn, nobody really ever says that they want to live in North Highland. Never hear that here. So this neighborhood has apartments, condos, townhomes, single family homes. The Dawson Terrace Community Center is here as well as the Dawson Terrace Park. There's playground, there's access to trails. And at the eastern edge of the neighborhood, you can follow the path under 66 and pick up the Custis Trail. While this overall location is great, I would almost say that being between two busy highways, 
probably not so great. Now condos are in the $400,000 to $1 million range, just like we saw in fake North Roslyn. On the lower end, these are one or two bedrooms at prices in the $800,000 to $1 million range. You're going to get like a townhouse condo. And so what does that mean? It means you don't own the land underneath it. It's condo style ownership. Over a million, you will get what we call fee simple, meaning you own the land beneath your home. Number eight, Waycroft Woodlawn. All right, Waycroft Woodlawn is another small neighborhood, but at least this time is a real neighborhood. Hooray! They have a civic association to prove it. This is a neighborhood of 580 single family homes that were built in the mid 1900s. Waycroft Woodlawn is where Washington Hospital Center is located in case you needed a big old landmark right there. You have easy access here to I-66 and shopping and dining options in Boston. Right in the middle of the neighborhood is where Woodlawn Park is. Uh, that is where there's a playground, basketball court, walking paths and open green space. Homes in this neighborhood are going to run between one and two million dollars. They also rarely turn over. In the past year, only 10 homes have sold here in this neighborhood. In the year prior, 19 homes. So out of 580 houses, those aren't good odds. Uh, I agree with niche.com. I actually think this is a neighborhood that de deserves a spot on the list, but can anybody move here? I mean, only 10 people in the last 365 days, so I don't know. All right, number seven. This is the one I told you guys you're gonna love. Niche.com's seventh most popular neighborhood in Arlington is, drum roll please, Arlington. I mean, what a slap in the face. They didn't actually designate a name. There's no Arlington neighborhood inside Arlington. It's just Arlington. And then there's neighborhoods inside Arlington. This is such a slap in the face. It was like that time when they revealed that Eric Cartman's father was really his mother. Anyone? South Park, late night, night okay. I dated myself. Anyway, I didn't even make it halfway through our Arlington list before we got to the part where I say, I don't really like niche.com. I think it's a lot of artificial intelligence garbage. And this is why you have to have real people providing you with real information like me. See, see how that works. Number six is Bluemont. So Bluemont includes a few different neighborhoods or subdivisions that you might want to call them. Brockwood, Lacey Forest, Brandon Village. The boundaries of Bluemont are larger than what we see in neighborhoods mentioned so far. I-66 actually bisects Bluemont with North Carlin Springs on the south side boundary, Glebe Road on the east, and contiguous parks on the west. Bluemont is mostly single family homes and some townhomes, some attached homes as you might call them. You will find some houses here that need work. They're going to be in the $800,000 range, but most homes uh, here that are move-in ready are going to be over a million and up to two million. Now, Bluemont Park is 51 acres of sports fields. There's a playground. There's a paved trail, which is actually the W and OD trail. It's Washington and Old Dominion. That is the 45 mile trail that runs from Sherlington, which is in South Arlington, all the way out to Purcellville, Virginia. And you can take the trail in Bluemont Park. You can actually head up to Bonaire Park, where there are more playgrounds and a rose garden. Bluemont Junction Trail runs a loop through the south side of the neighborhood as well. Now, number five, we have Dominion Hills. So just west of Bluemont, on the other side of Bonaire Park is Dominion Hills. Wilson Boulevard is the southern border of this neighborhood and I-66 is the northern border. Now, Dominion Hills also has their own civic association and that civic association is active. They maintain the Dominion Hills Park. Now you can get homes here under a million, but they're kind of few and far between. The prices here are mainly going to be between the $1 million and $2 million price point. There are mostly single family homes here and there are some townhomes as well. There are also 40 new single family homes being built at the Grove at Dominion Hills. Those are priced from 1.9 to 2.25 million. And this is something really to pay attention to here because very, very few homes sell in Dominion Hills. So now you've got a neighborhood where you've got 40 new homes. And if this is a neighborhood that you were clamoring to get into, you have a chance now because they're building new houses here. Of course, you have to have the money, honey. Now, in addition to Bonaire Park with uh, their Rose Garden, there's a skate park at Powhatan Springs Park. Um, people might call it Powhatan, Powhatan. I mean, you know, 
I pronounce things phonetically, maybe if you haven't noticed. Anyway, there's also Upton Hills Regional Park, which is part of Nova Parks, uh, and that's actually not part of Arlington's park system. Upton Hills has a water park called Ocean Dunes. There's also a membership-based pool called Dominion Hills of the same name. Now, Dominion Hills is right on the Arlington County border with Falls Church. So if you peek over that border, you're going to find one of the D.C. metro area's best targets, in my opinion, inside the Beltway at least. I also agree with Niche.com that this neighborhood definitely deserves a spot on the list. Number four is Boston and Virginia Square. Now, Boston and Virginia Square are actually two neighborhoods that are like right on top of each other. The fact that each of them has a metro stop is kind of hilarious, but there's, I mean, there's a reason for that. These two neighborhoods get lumped together. Virginia Square is synonymous with George Mason University, where they actually have a campus. This is more urban and dense living. Uh, as such, there's not a lot of, there's, there are a lot of condos in Boston and Virginia Square, not a lot of like single family and larger lots of land. The condos here start in the 300,000s and they go to just under a million. There are a small amount of single family homes like I said, they're going to cost in the one to two million dollar range. Now, this is a very busy, bustling neighborhood as well. Um, I'm in Boston at least once a week, if not more, because I am a sucker. I'm a member of Class Pass, and there's a workout class in Boston that I like at one of the gyms there. Boston has very much, like I said, it's bustling. It's got to feel like Roslyn. There's lots of businesses and restaurants and retail here. Any restaurant you could possibly want is here, as is the Metro with stops in Boston and Virginia Square. You can walk to each of them from wherever you are because it's pretty funny how close they are. Now, Boston went through a major redevelopment in the last few years, and it's actually a really great area. The clients that I have helped purchase in Boston are usually on the sort of younger professional side. They want the ease of condo living. Maybe they travel a lot for work or, you know, they just don't want a yard to maintain. Definitely an exciting neighborhood, definitely deserving of a spot on the list. I don't know that I would ever actually put it onto the same list as more residential neighborhoods here like Bluemont or Dominion Hills. This is where I think, if you're listening, niche.com, that you should split the list and be like, here's, you know, Arlington if you like cities and Arlington if you really, you know, are moving there for the suburbs because people go to Arlington for both of those kinds of lifestyles. Next one up is Clarendon and Courthouse, another one that they have bulked together. Clarendon and Courthouse are next to each other, and they mostly blend together in the same way that Virginia Square and Boston do. Clarendon is kind of like that busy, bustling neighborhood in the way that Boston is. And then Courthouse is a little bit quieter. Um, the adjacent neighborhood, much like Virginia Square, is the quieter adjacent neighborhood to Boston. Now, these two neighborhoods are mostly condos along the major strips of Wilson and Clarendon Boulevards. But once you get off of the strip by a couple blocks sort of in either direction, you are going to find that there are townhomes and there are some single family homes here. Prices start in the mid 400s for one bedroom condos. They can actually surpass a million. The townhouse um, prices have really shot up. They are over a million. Single family detached homes are one to two million. Now Clarendon is home to a few restaurants that consistently rank really high among the locals. Hanabi Ramen, El Pollo Rico and Saboris. I'll also toss in Colony Grill as well because they're from my hometown in Connecticut and they just have the best pizza. Um, that's all they have, pizza, but there you go. So Hanabi Ramen is Japanese, El Pollo Rico, chicken, um, and Saboris is tapas. Now, Clarendon and Courthouse are the epitome of walkability. You can do everything on foot here, grocery runs, restaurants, shopping, and still catch the metro at one of the strips in each of the neighborhoods. This is an area that people love to live, hate to leave, which is why you will see a lot of baby strollers here. It's a neighborhood where, um, you know, everybody can kind of cohabitate happily, though. Um, you definitely see young families. You'll see people that kind of stay maybe till they get to middle or high school. Sometimes they leave, sometimes they don't. Um, but it's a neighborhood where singles and families and empty nesters sort of equally cohabitate and equally enjoy it. Number two is Radnor Fort Myer Heights. Radnor Fort Myer Heights is not a neighborhood that you ever hear people mention. Um, most people would probably assume that it's like 
part of Courthouse or Roslyn, um, but it's got its own area with its own civic association. In 2018, the Washington Post described this area between Roslyn and Courthouse Metro as a mix of apartments, condos, co-ops, and townhomes, and just nine single-family homes. You will see very low prices here um, in the address range of the 1000 to 1100 Arlington Boulevard uh, block. This is the River Place Co-op. It's a cooperative. River Place has this notorious reputation, though, because they've got a ground lease that expires in the year 2050. Nobody knows what is going to happen at that time. As the years go on and we get closer to 2050, you see a lot of things happening. You've got people who speculate what's going to happen to River Place. Like, is somebody going to come in and just reclaim the ground lease and tell everybody else that the property that they own that's above that land is now worthless and they want them to get out. Um, you also see that there's more hesitation in purchases here because people do worry about that. Ultimately, though, here's what happens. The prices that are in the $100,000 range speak to people, and you will see a lot that are listed and a lot that sell and turn over to new buyers. Ultimately, what happens is that buying here for a few years actually ends up working out to be much cheaper than renting, even if you make $0 on the sale or you just break even. It's still cheaper than paying Arlington rents, which are going to be over $2,000 a month for a one bedroom. Now take River Place out of the mix and condos in this area are gonna start in the 400,000s and reach 2 million depending on the space that you've got inside the condo as well as the view. There are also a couple restaurants here of note. One is Quarter Deck, which is a super popular seafood restaurant. The other is actually not quite a restaurant, but it's a taco truck. You can find Tacos El Chilango in the 1700 block of 14th Street in Roslyn. So is this a good neighborhood? Yes, it is. Um, but would I rank it at number two and higher than Clarendon and Courthouse? Absolutely not. A niche.com, I don't know what you're smoking. I don't know if the glue's open. I don't know what's happening. Close it. You want to stop it. Number one, Colonial Village. Niche.com, how dare you? How dare you? Colonial Village is a 162 unit, affordably priced housing development. There are co-ops here and there are condos. The co-ops can be priced as low as $35,000, but they come with strings. No investors, no pets. The condos are in the mid 200 thousands. These are both starter homes and homes for people on fixed income. Would I ever tell you that Colonial Village is the number one neighborhood in Arlington? Never. I am convinced that they are writing these articles from AI and like the AI that was on sale at the end cap in the clearance aisle. This isn't even like great AI. I don't know what's going on. So you can do your own research, but niche.com is not a valid source of information when it comes to the top neighborhoods in Arlington. They started out as a site that just ranked schools and now here they are they've sort of branched out but whatever here is the major problem with niche.com in this list put aside for the moment the obvious issues where they either made up a neighborhood or they forgot to edit and just remove arlington from the whole shebang um and pick something more specific it's actually more like I'm more worried about the neighborhoods that they missed. Um, you know, this whole thing gets called into question because how could they not have mentioned Westover? How could they not have mentioned Barcroft? How could they not have mentioned Lion Park? And yes, some people call it Leon Park. I call it Lion Park. I ain't Lion. I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, the fact that they didn't mention these neighborhoods is totally mind blowing to me. So. Arlington is home to an incredibly wide range of age of residents who call it home. No one can create this like one size fits all list for everybody at my stage in life right now, middle age, can't believe I'm middle age, but here I am um, with kids, with pets. Condo living doesn't appeal to me, nor does urban living in places like Ballston would. So do better niche.com. Do better. Create two separate lists for Arlington maybe the younger set, the young professionals, the people that, you know, aren't going to be home a lot, want restaurants, want easy ways to get food and all of that. And then for the people like me that want like a yard or whatever, green space, good schools and all that, do better niche.com. Do better or don't do it at all. I'm Melissa Terzis. My contact info is coming next. Thank you.